Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial we will be talking about second messengers. Remember what is second messenger? It's obviously a part of signal transduction process or cell signaling processes. And we have seen in cell signaling the basic way of cell signaling is to amplify the signal and, as, and also the most important thing is uh, transmitting the signal from one place to another. And along with this transmission they need to amplify the signal. So for each and every cell signaling whatever cell signaling we are talking about whatever type of cell signaling because no cell signalings are the internal the central heart of a cell right because except for cell signaling cell cannot communicate with it uh, with the proteins and uh, nothing will happen actually so for cell signaling two important jobs are uh, being carried out one important job is to transmit transmit a signal and second thing here is to uh, is to amplify that signal amplify that signal okay so so these are the two important things transmission of the signal and amplification of the signal both of the signals are equally important right uh, now in this case of second messengers the second messengers are part of this internal cell cycle cell signaling processes because there are first primary messengers secondary messengers and also tertiary messengers present now in this case uh, we are going to talk about second messengers now the second messenger one example of it is cyclic AMP molecule now normal process of cell cycle inside the cell uh, if I take an example of phosphorylation because there are other chemical processes are involved but phosphorylation plays a vital role inside the cell because remember whenever some important signal molecule reaches onto the surface of a cell for example the molecule can be any kind of growth factor the molecule can be any kind of hormone right so whatever thing we are talking about there is a growth factor or hormone whatever it will uh, encounter it will attach with the cell surface receptor of that hormone or uh, or of that uh, growth factor and then it will trigger some downstreaming processes for that downstreaming process to occur properly we require different signaling molecules it's just like relaying something it's uh, I always take this analogy with a soccer game because you need to have a goal and you need to put the ball inside the net and what you need to do you need to pass the ball from one player to another player finally go, go inside the uh, inside uh, the net but in that case it is not amplified but in this case it is amplified that's the only difference right so in this case of cyclic AMP the common example of the system is that in the cell surface there is a hormone receptor let's say this is the hormone receptor and uh, let's say yes this is the uh, say uh, this receptor is for uh, epinephrine hormone so epinephrine comes epinephrine will come and bind with uh, this hormone receptor so once it is bound with this receptor it will activate G protein because remember inside it there is G protein and the G protein is actually consisting of three important subunit alpha beta and gamma right alpha part is the larger one beta gamma is smaller one so this G protein will be activated once this hormone will be in direct contact with this hormone receptor so then reception is done this is the first place second thing is activation of alpha uh, this uh, G protein this G protein right now the activation of G protein means this G protein will migrate and it will be in direct contact with this uh, ligand bound or hormone bound receptor and then the alpha unit will be separated from beta and gamma subunit right now this alpha unit will go and then it will activate another enzyme which is also present it's kind of uh, embedded in the cell membrane so if I draw this enzyme embedded in the cell membrane let's say this is the enzyme embedded in the cell membrane this enzyme is simply termed as adenylyl adenylate cyclase so this adenylate cyclase is an enzyme that is also membrane bound so this alpha subunit of this protein G protein will go and then it will activate this adenylate cyclase enzyme so remember the activation remember this is the relaying of signal and as it relays the signal it will amplify but remember du during this particular process of time it hasn't amplified much but it will amplify uh, downstream process very fast so what is going on so third pro process it's getting uh, attaching with adenylate cyclase and activates adenylate cyclase once adenylate cyclase is activated it can then convert ATP 
or adenosine triphosphate into a cyclic AMP. Remember, once we produced a uh, adequate amount of cyclic AMP, this cyclic AMP further phosphorylates a different protein like alpha kinase or any kind of kinase. Right? So let's say it's phosphorylate uh, alpha kinase. It phosphorylates this alpha kinase. Now, once alpha kinase is phosphorylated, this alpha kinase becomes activated and this alpha kinase further phosphorylates other proteins in the downstream of this process. Now remember, up to this process of generation of cyclic AMP, it's kind of very, very one-way process, no amplification in, in that sense. But once you produce this cyclic AMP, which is the second messenger in this case, once you produce that thing, second messenger most of the time should be a material which can migrate from one place to another place, which are kind of soluble in water. As you can see, everything is going on because cyclic AMP is a protein which cyclic AMP is moving inside. It's not a protein though, but it's moving inside the cytoplasm from one place to another place. So it can carry the information, it can move from one place to another place and it not only activate one thing because you can see all of these things, hormone is activating one receptor, one receptor activating one G protein, G protein is activating one adenylate cyclase. But once you produce this cyclic AMP, that amplification process just exponentially increases because lots of cyclic AMP being generated. Once a lot of cyclic AMP generated, this different cyclic AMPs will further generate more phosphorylated kinase and those kinase will phosphorylate some more because they are kinase, so the job of them obviously to phosphorylate other proteins, right? So that's why this second messenger plays a vital role between a direct contact of membrane bound proteins and the proteins that are play present downstreaming finally the transcription factor proteins which will control the transcription of different proteins by going inside the nucleus and controlling by bound with uh, the promoter sequence so this is in a sense is the second messenger system guys and that's uh, the importance of second messenger like cyclic amp i hope that's helpful and thank you